My name is Bryce Johns and this is Flanders Fields. Set in 1917 on the western part of World War I, Flanders Fields combines take that style deck building and tactical area control. It is a tense one to two hour dance through the mud and blood of a Great War battlefield for two players. Each player starts with an identical deck, a handful of unit tokens and defense tokens to place on the board. Players buy and use cards to place tokens, swing the balance of combat and other effects. The card play is augmented by tactical movement and combat on the board as each player strives to achieve objectives by barraging, gassing, and smashing through their opponent's lines to destroy their troops while maintaining an acceptable level of casualties. So here we have the board for Flanders Fields, the hex grid where the action happens, two sliders to keep track of casualties which are incurred whenever an infantry token is destroyed or an infantry card is played, and victory points which you gain by uh, achieving objectives, dealing casualties, winning skirmishes, and destroying artillery tokens. Here is the area called the depot, where players buy cards using the in-game currency called supply. There are four types of tokens, infantry, artillery, defense, and command posts. Each have a combination of uses including movement, combat value, and other tactical significance. The bulk of the game is strategically building and using your deck. Cards have a cost from which you can buy them from the depot. Uh, there are several types of cards that all have different strengths and abilities. Uh, there's two main uses for the cards. They can be used to gain tokens and supply on your turn, or they can be played to gain combat value during skirmishes on either player's turn. And most cards also have additional effects. There are a number of things players can do on their turn. They each have a hand of seven cards with which to pl from which to play. Uh, they can move as many pieces on the board as they desire. They can play artillery cards to barrage their opponent to attempt to whittle down their forces outside of combat. They can attack. Um, the combat is really simple. Let's players just add up their combat values determined by the tokens and the cards and whoever has the highest wins. Uh, you can also play cards to place new tokens uh, on the board and you can play cards to gain supply and buy new cards from the depot. Players can also manipulate the cards that are in the depot on their turn. Something I really like about this game is that the rule set provides a robust framework for the player's creativity. The amount and variety of cards along with the flexibility of the token play allows for many different strategies to be used. The combination of cards will be different every time, which forces the player to reevaluate and tweak their strategies. Also, while there are random elements to the game, the player is in control and doesn't feel like they're winning or losing the game based on one die roll. In conclusion, this is a competitive war game for both casual and experienced gamers who have an interest in military history, enjoy strategy games that don't take all day to play, or just enjoy smashing their opponent into oblivion. Anyway, players will keep wanting to go over the top in Flanders Fields.